This week's episode of our show is sponsored by our very own Dungeons of Drakenheim Mutagenic Masterpiece Bundle. This bundle includes both the hardcover and PDF of our original adventure, Dungeons of Drakenheim, as well as the dice that came with that set, the GM screen, and the faction pins. This bundle is now available for $99. If you haven't checked out Dungeons of Drakenheim yet, it's our very own campaign written by Kelly and I based on the events of our the first season of our live stream campaign. It was a huge hit on Kickstarter and the reviews have been absolutely glowing from all the game masters we've heard diving into the world of Drakenheim with their very own player characters. So this is the perfect bundle to get your hands on the book itself and some of the best accessories that we produced during the campaign. If you've been itching for a cosmic horror or dark fantasy setting to really sink your teeth into, Dungeons of Drakenheim is an excellent way to go. We're very proud of the work we've done on this project, and we're very excited to re-release it in this bundle. I'm so proud of the work that we did in Drakenheim, creating an open-ended campaign filled with great monsters and faction intrigue that is still easy for game masters to pick up and run, even right out of the book. And we've got lots of great resources to support you as well along the way. So check out the bundle that is available in the links through the description below. And now, on to this week's episode. Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D and TTRPGs, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. In D&D, alignment is a fun way to consider the personality and role-playing of both player characters and non-player characters alike, and set up those cosmic conflicts that can define our game settings and adventures. And and is also a one wonderful and endless talking point when considering which of our favorite characters from books, movies, and TV shows, what alignment they might have. And if your Dungeon Masters are anything like mine, they are all definitely characters as well. And so we're having a bit of fun today talking about the different alignments that we might associate with different types of Dungeon Masters. So all the way from lawful good to chaotic evil, what does it mean when we frame alignment in terms of the way a dungeon master runs the game? Well, Kelly and I have come up with a little bit of a way to define the law versus chaos axis, and then we're gonna talk about the nine alignments and how they describe your dungeon master style as a fun thought experiment. There's a lot to discuss today, so let's get rolling. So in determining the axis of law versus chaos and good versus evil, how do we determine that in regards to dungeon masters preparing their games and running their games? I think law versus chaos is actually super easy. I think that law tends towards respecting the rules and valuing what the rules do and what they accomplish, adhering to the rules, and also being maybe a little bit more organized and more prone to like game preparation. Whereas chaos is not really thinking the rules are that important or needing them and perhaps having a more improvisational style. Now, I don't necessarily think that one is better than the other in regards to this. You can be lawful in regards to being way too intense into the rules, and you can be chaotic in the sense that you aren't paying enough attention to the rules. But you can also be a chaotic DM who's really good at improv, or a lawful DM who knows how to use the rules. Oh, yeah. When we go to good versus evil, I actually think that we have a three-tiered system, and it is the good, neutral, evil, which determines what is most important in the game to that DM. For good, I think that the players are the most important aspect. Yes, the player's enjoyment, the players having a really good time, for a good aligned dungeon master, that is paramount. When we move on to neutral, I think that story takes the center stage here. Yes, and the reason why I would say this is that sometimes a good story involves the players losing. And it means that a good and satisfying and rewarding story might not always be the most fun in the traditional sense, but it still has other rewarding ways. It's just like watching a horror movie is not fun, but you still enjoyed it. And when we move on to evil, this is the dungeon master who puts themselves as the most important part of the game. Yeah. It's all about their ego, their own satisfaction, and their own selfishness. They may completely disregard the fun that the players want to have at the table as long as they're having a great time. So let's see what happens when we mix and match. And we'll start with the good 
and end up with the ugly. The Lawful Good Dungeon Master. This fellow runs a great game. I think that we're going to codename this one The Director. Okay. And, and The Director, The Lawful Good Dungeon Master. The Director likes to follow a module. They like what a mod I... module offers them. They like that the rules mm. are there in place. A module offers them a structure to work off. Yeah, I think that with The Lawful Good Dungeon Master, you're very likely to see someone who's going to use a published campaign setting and a fully published adventure campaign. And, but they're going to tend to pick the ones, I think, that favor the good versus evil narratives, the simple stories, the maybe not the simple stories, but the ones where the players are the heroes. It's your Star Wars instead of your Game of Thrones. Star exactly. Wars is like yeah. you have light and dark. It's obvious the, the heroes are the heroes. The bad guys are the bad guys. There's not really room for gray area here. Yeah kill the bad guys, slay the monster, save the world. Yeah, and I think the Lawful Good Dungeon Master likes the way the rules help the game run smoothly and fairly. They're generally going to make very fair rulings. They're going to be very consistent with the way they use those rules, but they're going to err on the side of the players whenever the rules and the players come into conflict. The one thing, though, that I think that you're going to run into with the Lawful Good DM is that they might be really in a hard place when the rules and the player's enjoyment butt heads with one another. And I think that this makes them A, predictable, and B, I think a lawful good dungeon master struggles to challenge their players because they're afraid of killing their players. I could see that. I could see that being lawful good, we're sticking to the rules, but we're also, because the lawful good dungeon master is so aware of the rules, Yeah, they also are knowledgeable about the rules that are going to impact in a negative way and they avoid using them. Yeah, but they're lawful good so they don't like fudging the dice. Yeah. So I think for a lawful good dungeon master, the most terrifying thing is a death saving throw. They can't stand it because that's the moment where the rules say, you're at the whim of randomness. And for a lawful good DM, they're like, well now it's a random die roll whether my players have a good time or not. And so, I think lawful good DMs might even be hesitant to even knock their players down to zero hit points. And so you might, you're, you're going to feel like you're always winning with a lawful good DM. Yeah. You're having a good time, but you're never going to lose. Now, yeah. I do feel like there's, there's some nuance in there. And I think I've probably played for a few lawful good DMs and you can still have a great time with them. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, I think for some people that just want to relax, a lawful good DM is perfect. It's, it's a good way to learn how to play the game yep. with a Lawful Good DM and totally. to just have a good time playing. I think playing. Lawful Good DMs are probably the best DMs for introducing D&D specifically to new players. Now, when we move on to Neutral Good, code name here, the author. Yes. And I think the reason why it's the author, most authors who are telling stories are telling character-driven stories. I think that the neutral good DM here is my classic saying, you learn the rules so that you know how to break them properly. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is the neutral good DM. They have a very good understanding of the rules, how to use them to amplify their game, but also how to bend them in favor of the character journeys. Yes, I think that the author, or perhaps maybe even they're, they're the designer, I think that this dungeon master is very likely to create their own homebrew and believe in that strongly. And they might be the one that is most will, they really like writing their own adventures, although they might use a published setting. They really like character driven stories where again, the characters succeed and have those high adventures, but they might have a little bit more complexity to those stories than perhaps the lawful good uh, dungeon master. I, I also think that the uh, neutral good, they may be a strong home brewer, but they might also be what I'm going to call the scrapbooker, which is yeah. where you take a bunch of modules. Maybe you're running Forgotten Realms, so you take a few of your adventures that are ran in the Forgotten Realms, take pieces out of them, mm. and adapt them into your own thing. I think the neutral good DM probably loves Eberron. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who does? Um, yeah. Just, just. Uh, I think the neutral good DM likes that setting because there's a lot of flexibility. The rules still have a structure there, but there's kind of a world that's got a, a complexity to it that the neutral good DM enjoys. But at the same time, they're still heroes, and the players are still going to be the ones that come out on top in the end. When we move to the chaotic good DM, I think we nickname this one the improv DM, and this this is the definition of the yes and. DM, right? Yeah. Where they're taking the input from their players, they're building on that, and I think that this DM might not prepare they at all, but they're going to build on what their players are bringing to the table in order to create a really cool and fun time for everyone at the table. The chaotic good DM is playing to find out what happens. They are possibly making loose notes on a scenario or a yeah. scene. And then they're saying, all right, players, go wild and we'll figure it out as we go. Yeah. And there's a lot of skill yeah. involved in that, but not necessarily skill of understanding the rules. I still think a chaotic good DM, I think all DMs generally have a mild understanding of the rules. The chaotic DM just favors the rule of cool above the other rules. Yeah, I think the chaotic good DM also might be inconsistent in their rules because what they're going to do is they're going to choose, say, oh, this is cool now, so it's going to work this way now because that's the coolest thing that could possibly happen and that's the most fun thing that could possibly happen now. But the Chaotic Good DM might not necessarily be plotting ahead. So unlike their Lawful Good and Neutral Good counterparts, I think the Chaotic Good DM is not really thinking about what's going to happen in the future of their campaign. Yeah. And so they might end up with a campaign that is a bit of a convoluted mess, mm -hmm. uh, that has a bit of a con uh, confusing story, and where sometimes the players get frustrated because they're, the player's like, well, it worked that way last time, but this time... And because yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're chaotic good, a player that said, well, it worked that way last time, the chaotic good DM can actually get suckered in by that because they want to err on the side of their players. Yeah. And so they're going to break the rules for the player and then let the player kind of manipulate them in that way. I do think that the, the best line for a chaotic good DM is, I'm going to let this fly this time. Yeah. And that that is a line that chaotic good dms that i might know uh mm -hmm. have used to basically make the statement i think this is awesome i don't know yeah. if i'm gonna think it's awesome if you do it again and they yeah. a chaotic good dm needs to be careful about that because you're chaotic and you like the rule of cool and you're going in being like oh yeah you want to use this spell to do this thing that the spell can't do it sounds so good let's do it you got to be careful because you're setting a precedent for yourself. And I think that's the, the mm -hmm. pitfall of the Chaotic Good DM. You know the other pitfall of the Chaotic Good DM? What? They'll let you use like any homebrew you got. You can pull the most broken thing you could find on the internet and run it past the Chaotic Good DM. And they, they're they probably the, they're the most likely of okay. any alignment to let you use it. Yeah. Like the Lawful Good DM is going to be like, I'm sorry, but that's just not balanced. Right? Whereas the Neutral Good DM is going to be like, uh, I didn't make that, so no. But I'm going to rewrite it for you. But the Chaotic Good DM is going to be like, oh, this sounds cool. Go ahead. And then it breaks their game. And then, yeah, a month yeah. later, they're like, yeah. oh, what do I do? Overall, though, all the good aligned DMs, the players are going to have a good time. Because they're the focus. Yes. It's, it, all of these DMs are cheerleaders for the players. Yes. I think that there can be pitfalls with all three styles. Depend, you've got rigidity on the lawful good side and you've got flexibility maybe going... It's, it's when you get to the real extremes. Like, you're too chaotic, you're too lawful. And then sometimes you get yourself into trouble with those situations. Yeah, but I think right? all three of those can be really strong DMs. Mm -hmm. And I actually think as we move on to lawful neutral, we're still looking at really strong DMs uh, on all three categories yes. in the neutral spectrum. The difference is that now the players aren't always going to win. The story is the center stage. Yeah. Lawful neutral, I'm going to call the judge. They are impartial to whether things are going to go well or going to go poorly for the players. The rules are going to help them dictate that. Totally. And they're going to try to stay middle ground. 
but to the letter of the law. Yeah. They're going to do it absolutely by the book. Yeah. And this is why I think the judge of all the nine alignments is the most likely to probably run a published module and to run it and to run those exclusively. Yeah. Where whereas they because for them it gives them the structure that they want um and kind of that impartiality about the world and the setting because they're kind of the ghost in the machine they're running the clockwork they are the computer that is running the game and whatever happens happens but it's the player's decisions within this intricately crafted system that they have going i see the lawful neutral judge as the sort of dm who still allows the players to be at the forefront of making choices but isn't afraid to show them the harshness of their consequences. Yes. The, the judge is going to be like, well, you did this, so this is the consequence. This is what happens when you do that. Yeah. Right? The, that, and that defines them differently from the lawful good DM. Because I think the lawful good DM might not even put their players in that situation. The, the lawful good DM might not even have the players facing situations where the consequences matter. But for the, the judge... It's like, well, you knew what was going to happen when you when you attacked the townsfolk. And now the rules of this society, the rules of this world say this is what's going to happen. And from there, as we slide on to the true neutral DM, or I think that we should call this one the dramatist. Um, I think that they are the true element of cause and effect. They thrive on the consequences of actions in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a little bit looser with the rules, but that allows them to bend to the needs of consequences. It's that balance scale. It's like for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, right? And the, the scales of that also kind of descend into chaos as well, because I think that the dramatist revels in like the highs and lows of things whereas the neutral good dm is going to break the rules to support the players the dramatist is going to break the rules to make a better story yeah and i think that there's a really interesting distinction here to be drawn between the rule of cool which the chaotic dm likes and the story because I think of all the DM types, the dramatist is the least afraid of a story that has a sad ending. Where if it was a satisfying conclusion, even though it was a tragedy, they're going to be okay with it. And again, I think that player characters can still have a lot of fun in that environment if they know that that's the DM that they're signing up yeah. with. If you're neutral good, it's let's help you win. If you're the dramatist, the true neutral... It's let's help the story flourish. Yes. And what does the what does the logic of the story, what does the logic of the narrative say? When we move on to chaotic neutral, now we have the rule of cool, but the rule of cool in terms of pushing forward the narrative. It's what's the coolest thing that could happen right now. Sometimes it's saving the players' lives, sometimes it's blowing up uh, something yeah. in front of the players' faces. The chaotic neutral game master is interested in the most interesting thing happening in the moment i might even be tempted to call this dungeon master the comedian because they're interested in perhaps what is the funniest sometimes fun happens at someone else's expense sometimes one of the players is the butt of the joke and so the comedian might find it hilarious and might think that the funniest thing is the players failing I also will say that this chaotic neutral vibe might throw around who the butt of the joke is so that it's not always yes. the same person. Yes. And it's not always the players. Sometimes the DM might even self-deprecate themselves for the joke. Yes. They might destroy their own scenario because it's awesome and it pushes the whole story forward. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting when I imagine the chaotic neutral DM versus the other two, we're talking about this spectrum of story being at the forefront. But I think the chaotic neutral DM doesn't have the story planned. They're just yeah. moment to moment saying, what's going to push my ongoing nonsense, not, not nonsensical, but my ongoing improvised narrative 
mm-hmm. forward in an interesting way. Where, whereas the lawful neutral has a very rigid story planned. Yeah. And, and, and th- you get that spectrum of how rigorously orchestrated is, is that story plotted out. Yeah. Right? The chaotic neutral still cares about the story. Yeah. And the players could win. The players could lose. The players will be challenged. But from moment to moment, they're saying an explosion is going to make this story way better right yeah. now. I think as well with all the neutral DMs, they're most interested in the players also contributing to making that story. So that's where you can end up with them being on the side of the players. It's if the players are all also interested in making the best story possible rather than just having a good time. Yeah. Um, and this is, I think, where you get into that very fun distinction between the rewarding nature of stories versus fun farts. Well, that's the thing is like some people show up to D and D to have fun and people mean different things when they say have fun yes. for our group. We know that fun is the story. We are a group that loves to tell mm-hmm. a story, but sometimes also we do one shots in our own private games where it's like, we're all going to play beefy characters who have like, Mm -hmm. way too powerful of items and we're going to go slay eight dragons and we're just going to drink beers and laugh Mm -hmm. about it the whole time yeah and and so i think that this is where that interesting kind of tension lies the interesting kind of conflict between the neutral and the good dms is that story versus player waiting and i i think it's a legitimate thing to actually discuss and probably one of the reasons why like session zero is really important because are you going to make your rulings on the side of the, what makes the most interesting narrative or what is most fun for your players? And sometimes that is actually not the same thing. What's interesting about this is it's possible for a player to be satisfied with the story, but they didn't have like a ha-ha fun good time. They, had, so, they could still have a rewarding time. Yes. And, that's and, the and the, I think distinguishing between what is fun versus what is rewarding is really, really important in understanding the nuance of these different alignments. The evil dungeon masters. Now, I will fully confess, I have been called an evil dungeon master colloquially, but I don't really believe I'm an evil DM. We'll talk more about this later. Because the evil DMs often are the stuff that uh, RPG horror stories are made of. Now, I do want to say that the evil DMs, there are people out there who will enjoy these tables yes and there are some people that love calling themselves an evil dm but i think really people who like calling themselves evil dms are probably neutral because let's look at what they are the lawful evil dm i think we call this one the tyrant i think that the tyrant loves a good death trap yes the lawful evil dm loves the Tomb of Horrors and the Tomb of Annihilation. <laughs> yeah, they love a dungeon that's structured, well-built. They can follow it. Here's the rules. Here's the laws. And we're going to use that to put our players through the grinder because the dungeon master thinks that sounds super fun for them. Death is around every corner. There are extreme challenges. And the... They've kind of built this Rube Goldberg machine as a challenge to the players of like, do you dare survive this? Yeah. <laughs> and again, I think that actually speaks to the exact players who want the yes. lawful evil DM. I think that the other two evils are actually harder to deal with, but the lawful evil DM is still going to stick to the rules. They might use the rules intensely in situations where you're like, you're going to rule that? And they're like, that's what the rules say. So yeah, you're yeah. getting your six level of exhaustion for whatever you're getting your whatever wh- whatever rules they can find to like twist the knife they they will they'll use and the rules also give the lawful evil dm this weird sense of impartiality right where they allow the rules to give them kind of maybe kind of like a plausible deniability or a level of distance it's it's not me that these are the rules of this death ta- trap dungeon I'm not the one doing this to you. You're the one that walked into the death trap dungeon. I think that for some players that love that extremely consequence driven play style where they're going to be challenged by a hostile world, playing with a lawful evil DM can actually be kind of awesome. 
because yeah. the the lawful element puts a certain measure of restraint on just how evil they can be. Although sometimes they might also abuse the law to abuse their players. This is the other thing is if you do have a lawful evil DM, there are a lot of players. I myself would enjoy a lawful evil DM's one shot. Mm -hmm. But I probably wouldn't enjoy a whole campaign with a lawful evil DM just because I like heroic yeah. stories and I like to feed the narrative. Things are going to feel consistently unfair. Like, the game is going to feel unfair with a lawful evil DM in the same way that, like, I mean, Dark Souls is going to feel feel unfair. You're going to feel amazing when you beat them. Dark Souls is actually such a good example because yeah. it's so lawful in the yes. fact that, like, when I play Dark Souls and I'm like, yeah, I beat the boss by hiding in a corner and stabbing it with a wall in between me and it. And people are like, that's how you do it. You yeah. find the way to use the game logic yeah. to exploit the system to win because that's the only way you're going to beat some Dark Souls bosses. But the game the game is still required to function on a set of rules and principles. That said, the lawful evil DM might not tolerate you breaking the rules. No. And they I, might punish you for breaking the rules. I think what I was trying to say with that is less so the players are going to exploit the rules, but the fact that in, a, in the video game, the fact that there is a yeah. law in place means that the game functions within a set amount yes. of rules that it is always going to be limited by. And I think the lawful evil DM is constrained by the rules in a way that allows you as players to know that there's only so far the evil can go. Yes. Failure and death are around every corner. And so you as a player have to feel like you are actually outsmarting the dungeon master and staying ahead of them in order to succeed. And that can feel really rewarding. But sometimes it can it can go too far and that lawful evil DM, it, it's like no matter what you do, it's like if you don't do it perfectly, the exact way they intended, you die. And I think that's where that's where you can have a lot of you can have a lot of problems with a lawful evil DM is the idea that there is this really bad situation where you're suffering as a player in the lawful evil DM's campaign mm -hmm. and you try to say something to them like, I don't think that this has been a very fair game. And they will always have the answer of, I'm just playing it by the rules. Yep. Yep. Neutral evil, on the other hand, is a deceiver. And I would call them the manipulator. Because this one's the, dangerous. This one is really dangerous because I think the neutral evil DM is characterized by pretending to be one of the other alignments and then gaslighting you when you call them on it. <laughs> they think they're neutral good. Yeah. I'm doing this for the players. Or more so maybe true I'm doing neutral. this to make the most fun game. Yeah. For themselves. For themselves. Yeah. I think that the manipulator will bend the rules, lie, and they will purposefully change their rulings. This is the DM that fudges the dice into crits. Because, because they, they think, think it'll it's going to yeah. be more interesting yeah. in the moment. Like, yeah. you know what would be really cool right now? If I knock out the paladin. Yeah. I, I think that once you've let go of the rules as a constraint, now you're just evil. Yeah, and this DM hasn't entirely let go of the rules. But like all the other neutral with respect to law and chaos, they're willing to break the rules as a means to an end. The, the thing with this, this neutral evil DM is that you can't really trust them because you might think that you are playing with a lawful good DM or you might think that you're even playing with a chaotic good DM until they pull the rug out from under you and make you have a miserable time. So then the question is, lawful evil, we talked about how there's still a group of players who love playing at this table. Neutral evil. Is there a way that the neutral evil DM is a fun DM to play for? I think this is definitely the red flag DM. I, I can't see... Okay, so the fact that we're calling the neutral DM the liar and the manipulator already means that the most important aspect of D&D, which I think is trust at your table, is gone. Even the lawful evil DM, I can trust them to yes. be lawful yes. evil. The neutral evil DM... I don't know what they're going to do or what 
random rule they might pull out yeah. or change in any given Cause, situation. Because this is the thing. They're going to use their ability to homebrew to justify almost anything. And then if they want to create a rule structure to impose on you, they will. And then they'll then the rules matter. Um, but then all of a sudden they'll change. It's like pray like in a weird way they're not even Darth Vader because it's like a prey won't alter the deal any further. But they will. They will alter the deal. Um, and in that respect, they become very chaotic about the whole thing. Um, and that's the kind of the balance between it is that they oscillate between sometimes the rules matter when it when it makes sense for them, and then sometimes they don't when it hurts you so and, and i do think that the neutral evil dm doesn't they don't care even about the story they don't care about the story and they don't care about their players they care about their own ego they care about their own themselves having a good time and they're willing to manipulate in order to prolong the agony and that's the whole thing is that the reason why the neutral dm the the reason why the neutral evil dm lies is because they want to keep their players and they need to lie in order to keep the players because as soon as the players realize what's actually going on they're going to quit we're just going to throw this out there the neutral evil dm is probably the most likely one to run a dmpc yeah to save us some grief i want to be specific and say they aren't the only ones that will run a dmpc no. But they are the most likely ones that if you're... The, these are the ones that are going to run a DMPC in the nightmare level. Where in the, in where, the way that yes. they're like, I'm putting this in because I want to participate in the game too and I want to be the one calling the shots. Yes. They're going to make it all about them. They, they, they might also have their NPCs. Even if they don't have DMPCs, the neutral DM might have their pet NPCs that are more important to them than the players. Yeah. They want to have their things show off and everything and show up and boss the players around. Yeah, it's going to be miserable. Is it as bad as the chaotic DM, who I'm going to call the psychopath? The, the chaotic evil DM can't hold the campaign together the way the neutral evil DM can. I, I because just... they're so insane that the players will probably quit after a single session. This is the thing, is if you're a chaotic evil DM, you're probably not going to be a DM for very long. No. Uh, you come to the game and you're like, I read the rule book once. You know what, what where they, the unfortunately chaotic evil DMs thrive? In organized play. And this is what really sucks. Is that in organized play, when you're playing in game stores and conventions, chaotic evil DMs can sign up to play at these games and oftentimes they're desperate for dms so they'll take them and they inflict themselves on unsuspecting players who signed up for that game and it's awful i want to say all of the other dms can also appear in in totally play. totally totally but but i will say that that consistently you're more likely to get them at a place where you don't know the dm you're signing up for rather than yeah. a consistent home game table yeah. because a, a chaotic evil dm who's trying to run a home game is going to get called out by their friends for being wildly totally. inconsistent for not looking at the rules at all and for making calls that just damage the campaign in general with no sort of regulation or rules or anything. Totally. The chaotic evil DM is the type of DM where it turns out that the barkeeper was a demon who wants to eat you. For no reason. Yeah, for, for no reason. It's just the entire world is like super hostile, is going to attack you at every turn. They're, they're going to completely ruin the character's backstories and all the effort. They're not going to respect the rules at all. They'll do crazy things with that don't even make any sense just because they think it's funny in the moment and it's other people's experience. I also imagine, I know that we've talked about how yeah. um, CR is broken. It doesn't really matter. But the chaotic evil DM loves the idea that CR doesn't matter. And they're yeah. like, my level three party staying at the first inn of the campaign. Little do they know that the barkeep is actually a disguised pit fiend who's going to attack them in the night. Yeah. And like the, the, the players have no idea. They just are like, oh, the first inn that we're staying at. Time to recuperate and get mm -hmm. our first long rest. Uh, and then they get attacked by a pit fiend and they're just like, what is going on? And here's the interesting kind of permutation. The chaotic evil DM also doesn't prepare. So that's why, in a weird way, they're likely to run a published adventure, but they're they're 
just using that because they have not like they have nothing else to work from. Yeah. So they take it and they say, "Oh, there's there's a bartender here. I'm gonna make them a demon," and they'll they'll just decide to change whatever they want about it on a whim for some reason to to have more fun themselves. It sounds like out of the evil DMs, the lawful evil one actually is a place to play. Yes. The other two evil if ones. If you enjoy that style. If, if you enjoy yeah. Tomb of Horrors uh, style games. I don't think there's any redemption for the neutral evil or chaotic evil DMs though. I, no. re I really don't. Uh, when we come down to it, as a final note on this episode, I, I think we've looked at all of this. I think... I think there's some nuance in here, and I will admit that there's a lot of nuance and flexibility within this whole scale. Totally, because it begs the question, what's your Dungeon Master alignment, Kelly? So, mostly, I think I associate with chaotic good. Okay. Uh, my reasoning, I am more prepared than I think what we said the chaotic good DM is. I do prepare some notes, but I rely on my improv, and I generally am improving in favor of the players. It's mm -hmm. kind of my go-to strategy. You can see this in our Monster of the Week series, but when I run my D&D table, I have one page of notes, and usually I'm off those notes by halfway through the session and completely making stuff up <laughs> as I go along. And usually it's because me and the players are just jamming out good ideas. Yeah. They are like, oh, let's go do this thing. And I'm like, let's do it. And I we're, we're, just, we're just bouncing. So... That's the style that I like to bring to the table, and I like being a chaotic good DM, and my players love playing at that table. What about you? I think my alignment has changed greatly over the years. I think I've had several alignment shifts as my style has changed. And and this is where I think like the nuance of alignment is important. I think that there is a part of me that deeply wants to be the, lo the lawful evil DM. I kind of love that style of play. I think that there's a lot about it that, that I think I... I love the dark consequences. There's something about it that I really like. I think in practice, I tend towards being neutral or neutral good. I think that you land in the true neutral category often, but overall, you are good. Interesting. Yeah. So this is the interesting thing is you do put the players first. You do make us suffer our consequences. <laughs> So maybe true neutral. I value the players a lot. And so that's why I, I feel like I teeter on the brink of this, this kind of weird L shape. I think there was a time for a while where I was very much a lawful good DM. Um, and I think that for me, I ran the game that way, but I wanted the story to be more important than it was. And I really like story and consequences. So I think that that's what pulls me away but at the same time, I like to improvise. So I feel like I'm getting pulled back to neutral. Yeah, I think I think yeah. you're actually close to true neutral who who branches out. Where I'm would you say I'm chaotic good? You've played at my table. I think you are very much chaotic good. I think that I'm chaotic yeah. good who's trying to stretch towards the neutral because the my lessons for myself now are although I love improv and I love bouncing off of my characters' ideas, um, I want to start focusing on the, the story and structure to take a bigger mm -hmm. role in my own games. I think for one of the elements of true neutral that is, is key is that sometimes different scenes are better served with the philosophy of different alignments. And, and so being true yeah. neutral kind of allows that balance. Like There's that kind of thing where like Mordenkainen um, would change sides in a conflict to, to keep that kind of balance. And I don't necessarily believe in like that perfect balance like perfectly balanced is all things should be i think that i like the highs and lows right the the drama um and so that's why i think for for me overall that's where i would 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 land because yeah sometimes sometimes the story like i want an interesting story and i've been playing long enough now that for me the 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 rewarding thing about the game is um is the story and i play with a lot of players who like yourselves and jill and joe who we have a very good friendship and we like having that because we have all sorts of other outlets to have fun together. Yeah. yeah. And I think when we do think of the code names that we gave them, like you are the dramatist and I'm the improviser. Okay. Fair it, enough. It, it yeah. feels, yeah. It feels, feels right. right. It feels right. So the question then is, 
What alignment are you? Tell us in the comments below, and what other qualities might you ascribe to the different alignments of the Dungeon Masters? Do you agree with us that the neutral evil and chaotic evil DMs probably are red flags? Do you feel that our alignment axis is completely wrong? Let us know in the comments below. We thought this was a fun ex thought experiment. It's just our, our opinions, and so we look forward to fun and productive discussion with you all. Also, if you are a group of players who have a DM and you're wondering what alignment they are, tell us what you think they are in the comments below as well. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible with the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube, please consider becoming a patron of our show by following the links in the description below. And if you want to make a call on what alignment Monty is as a DM, <laughs> you can check out our live play in the worlds of Drakenheim. It airs Tuesday evenings on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. And we got plenty more great content on TTRPGs right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.